Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call this 55th regular session of the Mayor and Council to order. Uh, we're going to start with our invocation from Councilmember Nye, followed by our pledge to the flag. Please stand as you are able. Dear Lord, please give me discernment and courage in my relationships. Help me by your power to be gentle and show the same love to others that you have shown to me. Love is giving for the world's need. Love is sharing as the spirit leads. Love is caring when the world cries. Love is compassion with Christ-like eyes. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Start with some announcements. Our rules of procedure were adopted on September 24th, 2013. The use of cell phones during meetings is restricted. All correspondence to elected officials for distribution should be provided to the city clerk and should include a copy for the clerk for inclusion in the official record. And our meeting schedule for December, uh, there are a couple of additions that I want to make note of. Uh, we have December 2nd next week at 4 o'clock, a work session. On uh, December 9th, Tuesday, we'll have a meeting with the Washington County delegation at 3.30 p.m., uh, followed by a work session at 5. On uh, December 11th, which is not listed on the agenda, there will be a public meeting on our goals and priorities at the library at 7 p.m. So we would encourage and welcome all of the public to attend uh, that special meeting strictly to talk about our goals and priorities. Uh, the Tuesday, uh, December 16th, will then be our regular session uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, at that time, uh, on the, I'm sorry, at 4 o'clock on the 16th, at, uh, we'll be meeting here in the chamber uh, for a joint meeting with the Board of Education. So we'll have a work session a joint meeting with the Board of Education following their meeting with the County Commissioners that day uh, to discuss the academic hub in downtown. Uh, and then, of course, on the 23rd, we'll have no meeting. Uh, the next section of our agenda, we're on to appointments. Uh, we'd like to appoint uh, Janice Kelsch, reappoint Janice Kelsch, Janice Kelsch to the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, her term to expire on November 30th, 2017. And for the Historic District Commission, Chad Crumrine, his term to expire November 30th, 2017. Can I get a motion to make those appointments? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. I have a motion and a second for those appointments. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Ayes have it, and those appointments are made. We have several guests with us here tonight, and we're very happy that they're here. Uh, the first, uh, we have some representatives uh, of some downtown businesses to accept Small Business Saturday proclamations. So I'd invite the folks from Anderson Photographs and Charlotte Wally, one of our artists in residence here in downtown Hagerstown, to come up and accept this proclamation. Welcome. Thanks for all your help with the pop-up shops this weekend, Charlotte. I know you were involved with that. Let's face the audience here. <laughs> this is a proclamation for Small Business Saturday. Uh, for Saturday, November 29th, 2014, I would just like to remind everybody that the pop-up shops in downtown Hagerstown will have an encore uh, this coming weekend. So on Friday and Saturday from 9 to 6, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, the pop-up shops will still be in effect. So if you haven't checked them out, come check them out. Whereas the city of Hagerstown believes that small businesses are the backbone of our local economy, generating jobs and improving the quality of life for citizens. And whereas the city of Hagerstown supports the efforts of local businesses and recognizes the critical role they play in our community to create jobs, boost our local economy, and preserve our neighborhoods. And whereas Small Business Saturday is a nationwide campaign to cultivate business for merchants of small businesses on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And whereas Small Business Saturday will stimulate economic growth locally for merchants by following the tradition of Black Friday and Cyber Monday, two of the busiest shopping days of the year. And whereas residents of our community and communities across the country are being asked to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year, now therefore, 
with the support of the City Council. I, David Geisberts, the Mayor of the City of Hagerstown, do hereby recognize Saturday, November 29th, 2014 as Small Business Saturday and encourage residents to recognize and support small businesses within our community by shopping at these establishments on the Saturday following Thanksgiving. So thank you very much thank for being you. here to thank accept you. this proclamation. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Andrew Sargent, our downtown manager. The only photographer you never hear. <laughs> One more from <laughs> is her. She gets it right every time. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <coughs> we have another proclamation. Uh, this one is uh, to recognize uh, World AIDS Day. And to accept this proclamation, we have Pastor Rob Apgar-Taylor from the Veritas United Church of Christ. Pastor Rob, thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. This is a proclamation, World AIDS Day is December 1st, 2014. Whereas HIV infection and AIDS continues to be a major health concern, with currently over 34,000 reported cases in Maryland, more than 1.8 million in the United States, and an estimated 35 million worldwide. Whereas the global epidemic of HIV infection and AIDS requires worldwide effort to increase communication, education, and united action to stop the spread of HIV and AIDS, and whereas HIV AIDS education and prevention organizations observe December 1st of each year as World AIDS Day to celebrate the progress being made in the battle against the epidemic and brings into focus the remaining challenges. And whereas World AIDS Day provides an opportunity to focus local, state, and national worldwide attention on HIV and AIDS and to disseminate information on how to prevent the spread of HIV. And whereas, in recognition of the fact that the fight against HIV and AIDS will be won by scientific research and by breaking down barriers to effective HIV prevention. And whereas, as part of this year's World AIDS Day observance, people are encouraged to ensure that policies and programs exist to protect the rights of the people, to be informed and educated about the risk of H HIV infection, and to deliver care for those infected and affected. Now, therefore, I, David Geisberts, with the support of the City Council, do hereby proclaim the day of December 1st, 2014 as World AIDS Day in Hagerstown, Maryland. Pastor Rob, thank you for accepting this. Thank you very much. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, thank you Mayor. Um, it is a joy to receive this, and uh, I want to thank the Mayor and the City Council. I have lived in Washington County for 12 years now, and to think that a World AIDS Day proclamation would have been made 12 years ago in Washington County I'm just amazed at the strides we've made in, in where we've come in Washington County. Um, HIV AIDS is on the rise again. You may not realize the number one place for HIV AIDS new infections is the Washington DC area, number one in the country. Washington DC and Baltimore. The state of Maryland is having so many problems right now with funding that all of its funding is going to Washington DC and Baltimore because of the epidemic proportions of HIV AIDS. The problem is that leaves the outlying areas, us, with little to no funding. This goes a long way in helping to get that kind of recognition and awareness to save people's lives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Rob. Thanks. Thanks. And now, our guests from the Hagerstown Gridiron Championship Classic. Uh, I think we would like to recognize uh, all of them, but why don't we start with the winners, South Hagerstown High School. Uh, we have with us here South High coach Toby Peer and his wife, along with MVP George Robinson. So guys, please come on up. Congratulations. Thanks for being here. And um, I think we've had so many of these now that we have a brand new plaque. You get to be the top one on the, uh, the new, the new do we want to take this out of the plastic? It would be a lot better. Thank you. Congratulations on your MVP status. And um, this is the full plaque. Coach, why don't you take that one? I think that one gets to stay at South Hagerstown High School. You'll bring this one back next year so we can add the next name on the list. 
Oh yes, of course. The main reason why you're here is to receive a scholarship presentation, and I think Orstown Bank and Sam Berman have that for you. So, Sam, come on up. Thanks for being here. And uh, would you like to say a few words about why Orstown Bank wants to uh, sponsor this scholarship program? Sure. I know um, you're a South High grad. I, I am a South High. Is that working? I am a South High grad. Um, and the opportunity was presented to us by the city, um, and we jumped right on it. Um, we are a community bank, love to help our community um, stay here local, and being part of South High, couldn't pass it up, so happy to do it. Thank you very much. And do you, would you like to present that to George at this like time? That, yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, we're going to do one. Congratulations again. Oh, of course. We should take a picture with this one. Sam, come on back. Where are you? Right, you're right here. We got to get a new one of these too, huh? No, this is all the way back to 2002. It's full up. So we'll put that on our to-do list. You want to take take one here to one end of it? All right, there we go. Congratulations. You're welcome. <laughs> and from North Hagerstown High School, we have uh, Coach Greg Staines and MVP Calvin Membry. Come on up. And the sponsor for the scholarship for the MVP at North High is uh, Mr. Brian Tedrick from the Kiwanis Club. Mr. Tedrick, thanks for being here, Calvin. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Well, Calvin, on behalf of the Kiwanis Club of Hagerstown, I'm proud to give you a scholarship check. Now, we exist solely to help young people in this world. And as a North High graduate, it's a great honor to give this to you. Thank you, sir. All right. And what year did you graduate from North High? 1977. All right, the year I was born. That's great. <laughs> It's the circle of life. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we? Uh, here's your plaque here. Thank you, Calvin. Okay, one, two, three. One more on three. One, two, three. All right. Thanks. Congratulations again. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Coach. Yes, we encourage everyone to stick around for the rest of tonight's business, but if you decide to leave, we won't be offended. Uh, the next item, though, is citizen comments. And thank you. And the first uh, person to sign up for citizen comments is Mr. Tim Thompson. Uh, I would just like to note that citizen comments are limited to five minutes per individual. Meetings are televised and recorded. Your comments will be on air and on tape and on YouTube. Mr. Thompson. If you don't mind just stating your name and, and address for the record, please. Okay, it's uh, Tim Thompson. Address is 12219 West Lawn Lane, Hagerstown. I uh, have a proposal uh, I'd like for the city to adopt. Um, down at Ocean City this past summer, I've seen, and you all have copies of uh, banners that was down there. It first started in California, and a guy seen it there, and he proposed it to the mayor and council of Ocean City, and they adopted the uh, banner program. And I like to do it here in Washington County. Um, it would be to citizens of Hagerstown and, and Washington County. Uh, they'd have to be a um, member of, you know, uh, they had to be a veteran. Uh, and, and like I said, uh, John Leather, he just passed away two weeks ago. Um, he, he was in World War II. He was, he was at the uh, 
first initial run of, of uh, Battle of the Bulge. But, um, and actually, I, I was, was planning on him being here tonight, but that didn't happen. But um, I talked to uh, Park. Uh, well, I guess where, let me start. All the banners where the Christmas signs are right now, these banners would be the exact same size as what the Christmas banners are right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked to Park and Recreation, and I'm proposing to have them put up approximately around Memorial Day and taken down approximately Veterans Day. Hmm. Then when the sign was taken down, it would be given back to the, uh, the family or, or you know, whoever bought the banner to be put up, hmm. um, which being the same size, they could work on you guys' uh, mounting brackets. Hmm. Um, and I, I'm, I'm going as, as far as going from the city of ha uh, from the, the city of Hagerstown the square in two directions or, or two blocks in each direction and if there's an, a need a, a more demand for the public I thought about maybe putting them in City Park which would it would be a smaller banner right there hmm. but um, uh, and I actually have this banner coming uh, this coming Friday if, if anybody actually wants to see it but it's, it's actually made out of the same material as you guys purchase your Christmas decorations and everything in there. And, um, and actually, I, I, if I got some different things in here where you can look and see you know, what the proposal is. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, you could all, all read over it. And I said, it's not like there's any, any kind of an answer right now. But uh, I would personally look over the program to get things. I'd be, I would be the contact point. Uh, I got a company on the dual highway is going to set up a Facebook account to where people could uh, contact myself mm -hmm. and I would be the original. It, it would be no cost to the city of Hagerstown for any of it. But Park and Recreation said they would, if, if it's approved, put them up and take them down because take them down on uh, roughly around Veterans Day, then they would put their Christmas decorations up. So it's not like it would be an additional charge for it. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it would be on the downtown area and possibly out, out of City Park. Uh, and then once out of City Park, uh, we would have to buy the brackets to, to put them up with. But um, I think by being downtown, you know, it's going to draw people in. You know, if you have a, uh, a loved one there or something like that there, you know, they may come down and say, well, while we're here, let's walk around and get something to eat or, or whatever. So it could draw people to downtown. But I, I think you know, Ocean City has it, and I like to see Hagerstown to be – a leader of Western Maryland of doing a program like this here. I mean, it's just like on Channel 25, uh, I, I was just watching it yesterday with the uh, different soldiers of the Korean War. They was doing the Korean War um, monument out there. And, um, you know, it's the forgotten war. And I think we need to stand up and recognize veterans, mm -hmm. you know, past and present ones. And like I said, you know, people would, come, would contact me or, and like I said, I'm open for any suggestions. It's not like this is a dictatorship by any means or whatever word I want to use. But uh, I think this is a very good way to honor our veterans. I was never in the service, but these men, just like right here, just like when John passed away two weeks ago, a brigadier general from uh, Belgium actually came to his funeral because he said he, he didn't know John but he helped liberate them from, from the Germans. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought that was a big deal for, for a Brigadier General uh, to come speak at his funeral. Well, Tim, I think you're on to something here. I like the idea, and I'll follow up with staff. And um, if you say it's no cost to the city, besides maybe be. some public works folks getting up in the cherry picker and changing out the, the uh, banner, then I think that that sounds like a good deal to me, and it certainly is good to honor uh, those veterans and uh, – so I think we'll we'll be in touch. Yeah, and actually, if anybody wants to have a meeting with me, I can come in at any time and any day. That's not an issue at all. Maybe uh, before you leave, you could just make sure we have um, your phone number or an email address or something. You don't have to give it to us yeah, right now. Yeah, my phone number stuff is actually on that one piece of paper I gave you, but like I said, I, oh, I okay. give it on my okay, uh, great. email address. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. Mayor, Mayor. Yes, sir. May I make a comment, please? Please. I'd just like to congratulate you as well. This is a great idea. Thank you for making the effort to bring it to us. Thank you. Um, many, many years ago, um, a former delegate with whom I served by the name of Peter Callis initiated a program of putting uh, veterans' names on top of street 
-hmm. designations in that's Hagerstown. Right. That's, that's been a great program over the years, and this is a, a great logical follow-up. Well, it, it stands out at you, like driving down Worcester Street or whatever. It does. It stands out to you. Like I said, be, there are approximately six months, and um, I see no negatives in it. I mean, that, that's my opinion, but, uh, and, and like I said, if anybody has any ideas to make us here a better program, um, we can all work together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next person to sign up to speak is Ms. Janet Bartels. Hi, Janet. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'll be very brief. I um, just uh, came here tonight because of the article on the front page of the Herald Mail this morning on the uh, Darby condominiums and saying that I'm having uh, moved into Hagerstown in that same neighborhood about the same time the Darby um, was being constructed. Uh, the experience in my neighborhood is uh, very, <laughs> he expresses it very well. And I uh, want to make a plea for some social capital, uh, putting their, uh, since we're in a targeted neighborhood with the, uh, for revitalization, and again, uh, talk about strengthening the neighborhoods since we are a key downtown neighborhood in order to have a stronger downtown and um, as you go planning for East End development I hope you will certainly bring our neighborhood into a more active role in that process and homeowners as I met someone at the laundromat the other day on uh, East Baltimore Street. And uh, he said, we homeowners here are a rare breed in our neighborhood anymore. And I think the article on the front page of the Herald Mail points that out very well, what's happened to a lot of us homeowners in downtown Hagerstown. Thank you very much. Thank you, Janet. That's it for anyone who signed up. Is there anyone who did not sign up who wishes to make comments? Okay, with that, we will go into mayor and council comments. I'll start here on my right and we'll work our way down. Mr. Alshire. I just have two comments. The one is uh, just like to thank uh, all of the volunteers, participants, and the staff for putting together uh, the, the Holly Fest and uh, the associated uh, pop-up events. Uh, I think that for the second time that was a successful sort of joint uh, venture. And I think uh, we realized that you know when these events do occur downtown, uh, that it's that moment to capitalize on uh, the presence of, of folks to not just come down for that single event, but to be able to stay and, and visit a little longer and, and you know, dismiss the uh, uh, the myths that are out there um, about its uh, limitations. And the second is, um, just want to say, I uh, hope everyone has a good Thanksgiving. Thank you. Mr. Brubaker. Yes. Uh, again, uh, I had happened to have many events last week, but the highlight was definitely Friday night, pop-up shops, but not just the pop-up shot. In conjunction, downtown restaurants, many of them had a full house, business thriving, people enjoying themselves on the street. It was a great thing to see. Um, second thing is uh, last night at the MML chapter meeting, we went over the legislative priorities for the new General Assembly and the new governor. Um, and uh, we had, uh, I think, all the full delegation present. So uh, uh, I hope we got some of the messages across. Thank you. Mr. Metzner. Thank you, Mayor. The weekend was wonderful. Um, it is great to see the young people of our community decide to invest in it, and it is uh, working out very well, and I want to thank them and wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. Mr. Munson. Um, I would as well like to congratulate and thank the uh, downtown movement uh, for their efforts. Uh, they, the downtown movement popped up just in time. 
And uh, the pop-up weekend that we just had was great. I spent some time there Friday, and I spent some time there Sunday. And it was terrific to see that much energy and, and that much commerce going on in downtown Hagerstown. I'd also like to mention one other thing. I, when I read the newspaper this morning, I saw the obituary of Glenn Bowman. Mm -hmm. And some of you may remember uh, years ago, Glenn Bowman was the sheriff of Washington County. And it was my privilege to be in public life uh, at the time that Glenn Bowman was in public life. And Glenn Bowman was a wonderful sheriff. He did a great job. He handled that job extraordinarily well, and he was a true professional, as well as a wonderful human being. And Glenn left our community better than he found it as a consequence of his public service. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Nye. Okay, bear with me because I wasn't here at the end of the last session that we had, so I have quite a bit. All right, first off, the events of the weekend were wonderful. Urban Partners said events every weekend, and it has proven itself. If you have it with the pop-up shops, people will come. They are interested, and that was a good thing. Public safety is on the front of my paper. I feel personally with our task force that is Washington County that there needs to be more officers. Washington County is huge. And when you put in the city of Hagerstown, which we are part of Washington County, there is a lot of needs for our officers with the task force to be in this city. We now have four city police officers, four county deputies, and five DEA that are on the task force. When you look at that number and you look at all of Washington County, you kind of have to scratch your head and say, how can they do it? We have major problems and major problems for me is looking at what we have on the streets as open air drug markets. We also have in-house. If anybody's out there, they're seeing it. If people think that you can be sheltered from it, you can't. It's there. Um, you take a nice day, you're going to see them. They're on the phone. They're making their contact. They'll walk up to cars. You can see them when they pull up at homes. And all I can say is explore and you will see. The need is there. I hope, too, that our street crimes unit gets back in force. This was something that was, and then it went when money was tight. But we need to have our own officers also on the streets of Hagerstown. I had two incidents on Saturday. One, I was going to the market house, and I had one gentleman that had his head in the street over here beside Zion Reform going down Church Street. The rest of his body was on the sidewalk. I hurriedly got down to the market lot and called 911. In doing that, I ended up with two gentlemen that were already up there that were assisting him. He then was sitting on his rump at that time. They decided they would leave as he was trying to get up, and I hurried up still with 911 on the phone, trying to get description. When he stood up, it was a matter of he needed to go but couldn't go because he wasn't able to walk to go but still wanted to. This is just, just a tip of what we see routinely now. And Church Street is something that it's, it's just being inundated with. That market lot, over the weekend, I know that I had seen at least four times the cruisers that were down there for either those who are either mentally disturbed or we've got a drug problem or we've got an alcohol problem. And again, when you're looking at that location. You don't have to go too much further to see it elsewhere. That's why the need is certainly there. Also, um, last week we talked about goal setting. I said in the beginning I felt that we had enough on our plate, but I know Kristen is very passionate by the East End. I as well am. I know that it is a 
a big blight. And I think that if we look at anything, our goal setting should look at that east end of town and what we in fact can do and move forward. I also understand that we had character counts for our employees. I don't know why, but we did. Um, when you go to school, you usually learn all of what is on the character counts program. But I'm only hoping that some of our directors and managers, if they also went under the same course, that they found a good lesson in the training. Um, I have an issue, and my council members have got to listen to me on this one because this one has floored me, and I still don't know how they're going to get around this. This has to do with code. I have a double house. The chimney on the double house is both. All right, the chimney is coming apart. One person who lives there is there. The other person who owns the other half is in California. When I went to code, and this has been now three times, it was a matter of how can you fix this? Well, there were extensions that were given. The last extension was February. But councilman, I want you to tell me, how can you abate a chimney when you have one owner there and the other owner isn't there? I want you to think about that and then let me know. Also, of uh, local organizations, and I'm very grateful to the city in putting that forward. Uh, children in need, I know that I had brought out some time ago. They need sizes zero to 22. That would be infants to growing teenagers. And I also want to thank um, Karen Giffen and whoever else was involved with Toys for Tots. There was an article in the newspaper that they had put out, and it was that same week that the city of Hagerstown, who has donated for a long time, I know since I've been on council, to help with Toys or Tots. And I just thought that that's something that is really important. And I'm sorry for going on, but I had to get done what I had to get done because I had a viewing to get to last week. Thank you. Thank you. The only thing uh, I would like to remark on, um, you mentioned the character counts training, and I want to thank staff for doing that. I did review the training materials, and I think it was a very excellent program for anyone to do. Uh, presented a series of uh, situations that I think provoke good discussion amongst people in the various departments of uh, city government, and um, I hope uh, the staff continue to infuse character counts throughout all of our operations. On uh, Thursday of last week, I had the pleasure of attending uh, the United Way rally, and uh, there were some really great kids down there from Winter Street Elementary School and from Girls Inc. and from Barbara Ingram. Um, and I want to thank uh, all the folks who made that possible and just remind people that it's very easy to give uh, through the uh, workplace giving program where you can have some uh, certain portion of your check uh, taken out and donated to the United Way. It's a really great way of giving. I also met with our newly elected delegate last Friday. I uh, had a really good sit down chat with him uh, to discuss, you know, where the city is at in terms of uh, its budgetary position and other uh, goals and priorities. Uh, we could have kept talking for hours, but of course we had to get to the tree lighting. Uh, and the pop-up shops, uh, which ended up being a, a fantastic evening. Um, I, I visited those shops, I think, every, every single one of the days, Friday night, Saturday afternoon. I spent about three hours walking around and uh, meeting with every single vendor and, and all the, the, the existing businesses in the neighborhoods just to see how things were going. I think the general consensus is that it was a, a hit. It was a success. So. I uh, want to thank again all the volunteers with the downtown movement, city staff for working with them, uh, and I hope that all of that energy continues. Uh, and also, uh, just today, attended the groundbreaking ceremony uh, for West City Elementary School, uh, which is slated to be open in the fall of 2016, and looking forward to seeing the progress out there. Uh, and with that, I'll uh, go back and ask the city administrator if he has any comments. I'll just wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving as well. And then, as I did last week, a reminder that with the holiday, our collection schedule changes for refuse and recycling. Uh, we'll have a, a delay of one day for the Thursday morning collection and the Friday morning collection. They'll be pushed back 
one day. And that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the minutes. And just wanted to note that uh, our clerk has not yet completed the minutes for October 21st and 28th, but those will be coming soon. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for the approval of the minutes as presented by our, our outstanding city clerk for the mayor and city council meetings held on October 7th and October 14th, 2014. Second. <clears throat> Motion made by Mr. Munson, second by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Minutes are approved. Next item is the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that all the consent agenda be approved as presented. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, second by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Ayes have it. Consent agenda is approved. Under unfinished business, there is no unfinished business, so we're on to do business. Item A is the introduction of an ordinance accepting a land transfer from Beezer Homes for Terrapin Park. May I hereby move for introduction of an ordinance authorizing acceptance of an offer of 2.09 acres of land from Beezer Homes, Inc. to the city of Hagerstown in collegiate acres development for the purpose of a public park. Park shall be named Terrapin Park. I authorize staff to begin maintenance of the park as outlined in the ordinance. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. The introduction is approved. Next item, item B, approval of a resolution to join the Healthy Eating, Active Living, or HEAL campaign. Mr. Mayor, I'm approved for the approval of resolution to authorize staff to register the city with the Mid-Atlantic HEAL Cities and Town campaign. The program is for Maryland municipalities that strive to improve the quality of life for their residents through policies and programs that improve physical activity and wellness. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Resolution is approved. Item C is the approval of a resolution for a user agreement to amend the American Little League agreement. Mr. Mayor, I move the Mayor and Council approval of resolution enter into an amendment to the user agreement with American Little League, Inc. This amendment removes the youth baseball fields at Fairgrounds Park from the exclusive use and maintenance responsibility of the American Little League. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the agreement is approved. Next up, item D is the approval of a resolution, a user agreement, the second amendment for the Hagerstown Area Police Athletic League. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for the mayor and council approval of a resolution to enter into a sec second amendment to the user agreement with the Hagerstown Police Athletic League. This amendment expands the agreement to include priority scheduling and maintenance of the youth baseball field at Fairground Park. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the agreement is approved. Item E is the approval of a resolution, a user agreement with the YMCA of Hagerstown. Mayor, I hereby move for Mayor and Council approval of a resolution to enter into a user agreement with the YMCA of Hagerstown, Inc. The YMCA will have maintenance responsibility and non-exclusive but priority scheduling use of a multi-purpose field in Fairgrounds Park. This agreement is for the period of January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015. Users shall have the right to renew this agreement for up to four additional one-year terms beginning January 1, 2016. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Ayes have it, and the agreement is approved. Item F 
is the approval of a resolution, a user agreement with the Hagerstown Area Youth Soccer League. Mr. Mayor, I move from Aaron Council approved resolution to enter into a user agreement with the Hagerstown Area Youth Soccer League. The Hazel will have maintenance responsibility and non-exclusive but priority scheduling use of three multi-purpose fields at Fairgrounds Park. This agreement is for the period of January 1, 2015 through December 31st, 2015. Users shall have the right to renew this agreement for up to four additional one-year terms beginning January 1, 2016. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Brubaker. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The agreement is approved. Item G is the approval of a resolution authorizing the designation of alley number 5-55 as Marguerite Way. Open speak. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move to authorize the designation of alley 5-55 as Marguerite Way. This alley runs between Potomac Avenue and Millie Parkway and East Irvin Avenue. The alley is so named in honor of Margarita Sear, who has lived in Potomac Street since 1959. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Munson. All those Mr. in favor? Mr. Mr. Yes. Mayor, if I could make a comment. Um, I've known Marguerite for a very long time, having knocked on her door through many elections. And uh, I just want to remind people that she's a very, she was, I assume, uh, perhaps still at least thinks about it, a very fine artist who produced some, some great artistic work during her lifetime. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, yeah, we have some family members here. Oh, great. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for being here. Our pleasure. Indeed. Thank you. I'd be glad to be there to present her with her sign when we uh, get to that point. Indeed. All right, we'll have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we'll soon be renaming that alley. Next item is item H, the approval of the application for FY 2016 program open space projects. We are hereby move for Mayor and Council approval of an application to Washington County requesting FY 2016 program open space development funding of improvements to the city's recreational facilities by priority as follows. One, A&E walking trail, park development phase two, $45,000. Two, fairgrounds park soccer field lights, 36,000. Three, dog park two, 54,000. Four, Fairgrounds Park Pavilion, 27,000. Five, Skate Park, 27,000. Six, City Park Play Equipment, 31,500. Further move to request 100,000 in land acquisition funds for purchase of real property as part of the A&E Trail Project. Second. I have a motion made by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, just a comment. Uh, this is kind of a wish list, but it's a wish list that's very important to the city of Hagerstown and to the development of the city of Hagerstown. And um, we need to ask uh, those whom we are asking not to forget that Hagerstown is a part of Washington County. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm going to follow up on Don's uh, very cogent uh, comments uh, because uh, I made the motion, but I want to amplified by saying we have a new group of commissioners I talked to several of the new uh, several of the commissioners uh, earlier today and I hope number one on this matter but on many others that they respect the city's priorities we've set out our priorities have have the dignity to, you know to, to follow what we've done and what we know our city best Two, take note that Hagerstown contains about 75% of the population of municipalities in Washington County. I think there's enough said. Hagerstown has three quarters of the population when you're determining funding levels. And finally, realize just how much the many and very professional services that Hagerstown provides relieves the county of its financial obligations. The amount's very considerable. 
uh, so again, I hope the new commissioners can uh, uh, keep those factors in mind. Very well said. Any other discussion? I just have one comment. Because we don't have one, I would have rather seen that skate park be moved up. You know, we still continue with kids that are on skateboards and they're all over the streets and they still don't have a place that is a unified place unless we come through with something that's in the works, maybe. Duly noted. Any other discussion? Motion made by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Metzner. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Motion carries and the application is approved. Next up is item I, approval of the general fund agency contribution policy. Mr. Mayor, I move from Mayor and Council approval of the general fund agency contribution policy to provide guidance for city's funding and allocation of general fund grants to local community agencies. Purpose of this policy shall be the following. One, to establish a level of general fund funding for agency contributions. Two, to find the city's timeline for this process. Three, to specify the city's requirements for the information to be provided by agencies seeking funding. And four, to outline the schedule of the city's distribution of funds to agencies receiving a grant of more than 5,000. Mayor and council and staff will review this policy at a minimum of every five years and update as necessary. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? I hope the budget allows this much. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, say no. Policy is approved. Next up is item J, the approval of a contract with GovHR USA for City Administrator Search Services. Mayor, I hereby move for an approval of a motion to retain the services of GovHR USA LLC for the purpose of conducting city administrator search services in accordance with RFP P1570.15 and the proposal submitted by GovHR USA on September 22, 2014. Total projected cost is up to but not to exceed $21,000. Second. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could make a comment. Yes, sir. The mayor and the council put a great, and the staff, uh, put a great deal of work into this and uh, we think uh, this is the right way to go, and, and we think that we have uh, the people who can best do it on our behalf. And this is one matter for a, a refreshing change where the cost is much less than I anticipated. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. 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 The motion carries three to two. Next item is item K, bulk purchase of gasoline. Mr. Mayor, move from Mayor and Council approve the bulk gasoline purchase for city operations from Petroleum Traders Corporation. The bid price is 2.7101 per gallon. The estimated annual cost of gasoline is $362,239 based on an estimated annual use of 125,000 gallons. The contract was competitively bid by the Washington County government to obtain a better bulk rate Washington County Government, the Board of Education, and the City of Hagerstown. Second. Motion made by Mr. Alshire, seconded by Mr. Mensner. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I, I believe in work session we discussed this, that the, the price does uh, fluctuate according to the price per gallon designated intervals. Is that correct? In other words, it's not locked into that that price is that price right. for that day it will fluctuate with the actual price of gasoline that's an estimate that's a price you know negotiated for purposes of bid okay any other discussion all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye, aye. any opposed say no motion carries item l is the approval of a purchase of diesel fuel Mayor, hereby move from Mayor and Council approval of the bulk diesel fuel, fuel purchase for city operations from Petroleum Marketing Group Inc. The bid price is 2.7391 per gallon. The estimated annual cost of diesel fuel is $272,287 based on an estimated annual use of 90,000 gallons. The contract was competitively bid by 
Washington County Government to obtain a better bulk rate for Washington County Government, the Board of Education, and the City of Favorstown. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? <coughs> also fluctuates with the price of gas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Diesel fuel. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Motion carries. And item M is the approval of water and wastewater chemical purchase. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor, I hereby move the Mayor and City Council approve the expenditure of $572,414 of wastewater division funds and the expenditure of $563,954 of water division funds for the purchase of bulk chemicals. Purchases will occur in the second half of fiscal year 14 and the first half of fiscal year 15. The chemicals which are used in the treatment processes employed by the division were bid through the city county joint bidding process utilizing county bid PUR-1266. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries. Item N, approval of Catalyst Project Number 1, an RFQ for developer partner for office development and recruitment project. I hereby move that the Mayor and City Council authorize staff to post the attached request for qualifications for a developer partner for the Catalyst Project Number 1, office development and recruitment. Second. Second. I heard Mr. Metzner first, so the motion was made by Mr. Munson and seconded by Mr. Metzner. <laughs> This is my good ear, Marty. Uh, <laughs> any discussion? Marty it's like Jeopardy, we need a book. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. No. Motion carries four to one. Item O is the approval of automated speed enforcement camera system contract with Breckford Corporation of Hanover, Maryland. I'll be the bad guy. I hereby move from Mayor and Council to authorize and approve a new contract that will meet the state's changes to the current law governing automated speed enforcement programs. The contract will include a flat fee schedule rather than a fee per ticket structure, among other items, in order to comply with Maryland law. This contract with Breckford Corporation will begin upon signature by the City of Hagerstown and end after a two year period. The city shall have the option to renew this contract two times for one year each. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Motion carries. The last item, item P, approval of a facilities permit agreement with CenturyLink Communications, Inc. for a fiber optic installation. Mr. I hereby move to execute an agreement with CenturyLink Communication, Inc governing the installation of an underground fiber optic cable along Wilson Boulevard, Frederick Street, and Bowman Avenue. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Brubaker. Any discussion? Yes. The, the way I read this is they haven't done this yet, that they're gearing up to do this. But it doesn't say in here where they're gearing up to do it, but aside from the streets that are listed. And I guess my curiosity is, uh, let's take Wilson Boulevard for an example. They, uh, Wilson Boulevard has endured uh, a level of utility right-of-way work for uh, some time now and are, are continuing to see that. Is this going to be another round of another utility coming in and digging up our streets and sidewalks in this area? To install underground utilities? Yeah. Um, a lot of the work they're going to try to directional drill, so yeah. there won't be as much digging. Like they're doing on Virginia Avenue. They're, uh, they outside are. of the city, coming up from the sheets uh, at halfway, their, their direction of drilling looks like some areas. Right. Like when they went under Halfway Boulevard. Right. That's pretty, pretty typical. Um, but yes, you're correct. They have not done the work yet. They have construction plans that, that this would be part of. Okay, so I guess my next question then is, it appears that this is uh, a, um, uh, a fiber optic entity uh, that is uh, laying infrastructure comparable to what other 
um, entities are offering. Is that correct? That's how I understand it, correct, yes. I guess I'm just trying to figure out uh, if like that's the case, how many of them, how, how many of these entities are there out there that would want to come in and do this? And how many times are folks going to have the streets and sidewalks in front of their places? I mean, with, with due respect, if you look at South Potomac Street and Wilson, there's no way, I'm assuming, with the snowfall, let's say it's coming tomorrow, uh, I'm assuming we're not going to go out to these folks and require their, 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 their sidewalks to be shoveled because these utilities that are installing these, whether it be the, the NPL, I guess that's the group that's coming in doing the gas-related stuff, right. or this entity, I mean, they're, 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 they're ripping up the, the, the public right-of-way, and I would hope that all of the patchwork that we're seeing that um, that there's going to be some more mm, complete overlay of this area than these utilities coming in. I mean, this is going to be one after after the current one that's going to do another set of, of work and patchwork. I'm assuming there's some plan to overlay that because I, if I recall correctly, Wilson Boulevard was not overlaid all that long ago. Right. Um, there are certain places where they'll be doing some overall milling and patching. It depends how close the patches are together, is what our code allows us to enforce. Of course, the sidewalk system on South Potomac Street is going to be completely replaced, and that's, I'd say it's maybe 50, 60 percent done. But not, but not the street, uh, not the street in, in which yeah. some of this impact is occurring. Right. Uh, I just, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many entities there are out there doing this, you know what I mean? But, but. I think folks along these streets can only take so much. Uh, we can only endure so many private entities that want to bring this type of underground utilities in. And I think we need some type of, of uh, larger, you know, uh, a comprehensive approach to full street overlay, milling and overlay when this does occur, because okay. some of these areas, it's like, you know, riding the humps on, on, on you know, uh, a bumpy road at this point. And I can remember it cannot be five, ten years ago that the Wilson Boulevard was overlaid. Right. That's right. I just... I think this is at least the fourth communications carrier we're dealing with. AT&T, I think there's um, Third Dimension. Yeah, I was going to say there's several listed Level in here. three communications. Um, By Shendell. the time you get about 12 of them in the ground, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I got much of a road left. Uh, and, and, okay. if, and if... We and can if, bring that back. In ten years from now, if... You know what I mean? All of these folks got to start working on systems and upgrades around the same time. Like I said, I just hope at that point we've got something that says, hey. A dig once policy. <laughs> yes. Which I think you've tried to do, like with the gas company. Now, apparently they are under some time constraints to get their project done. And so there have been some areas where we've tried, I mean, we tried to coordinate with them. In terms right. They of, seem to be jumping around at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're already going on roads that were you know, we had planned to overlay after they did their work. I think that's the point, is that we try to come in and oh, definitely. our pavement we're, preservation we're them program already for is next based year. on mm -hmm. what their work is. Uh, right, I just don't want the, the NPL guys who are doing gas-related work to come back in Wilson Boulevard, mm -hmm. fix up their patchwork, and two months later, you know, this group come in mm -hmm. and dig up other areas, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and then be there, and then come back in and do patchwork. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I... Okay. Yeah. At some point, could you, when the trucks are riding around, um, get as many roads that we have that have been patched? And I, I really would like to see that whole um, verbiage on how patching has to be. Sure. I brought that up when Mulberry was mm -hmm. done. It's and, you know, of course, Kristen, you're talking about more than, than one firm coming in right, doing the things product. they just now reopened the other night and brand new gas lines that there was a leak so now we have another one so as we go down mulberry and i will say mulberry i live there that There's you're on of this side of the road here and when you're coming down mulberry eventually you're going to be falling off to the right but that's okay because that's all the more the city of hagerstown requires it's and that, that was not done until I came back into office and was promised, when I went into office first time, and was promised when my kids were in Little League that that would be overlaid. And that was the first time that I ever saw it, and I will be dead before it is ever done again. 
And well, we have a lot more of them in town. And honestly, by the time you go through humps and bumps and everything else. It's probably been 20 years since we looked at that policy. So this would be definitely taking it up a notch. We'd be happy to do that. We'd just like to take, we'll bring it back at a work session and see what we want to do. Okay. Well, there is a motion on the floor made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Brubaker. All, any other discussion? Oh, let me just make one comment. Uh, the comments made so far are, are good comments and accurate comments, but I think we need to, to realize, too, that this fiber is uh, going to give us a certain uh, technology advancement that we would not have otherwise, um, so that uh, ultimately uh, its use will probably be very helpful to the citizens of Hagerstown. But I, too, don't like the roads torn up. All right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. The motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good job.